spot we have the Demonic Particle Accelerator. It seems that Elon is trying to cast CERN's Large Hadron Collider, aka the Particle Accelerator, in a bad light. Via Twitter, through a meme, Elon called it demonic. What the heck about it could be demonic? This is honestly fascinating as us, you know, regular folk would just assume that it's just a scientific tool. The tweet read, please let me use the CERN Large Hadron Collider. I am normal and I can be trusted with a demonic technology unlike anything the world has ever seen. Does this machine have some kind of darker purpose that perhaps the rest of the world may not be privy to? Do tell, Elon. Do tell. Number nine, a fateful turn of events. Queen Victoria's reign began in 1837 and it lasted until the Queen's death in 1901. At just age 18, Alexandrina Victoria had to rise up to the throne. She was born, of course, on May 24th, 1819, and Queen Victoria was actually fifth in line when she was born. So right off the bat, it was actually highly unlikely that she would ever get to the crown in the first place. And then one by one, all of her family members suddenly began passing away. In four years, three of Victoria's cousins passed, and then her father and grandfather died, both a week apart from one another. So by the time 1830 rolled around, Victoria was only 11 years old, and already she was next up. She was next in line for the throne. Number eight, the Irish famine. The Great Famine took out a lot of people, not just Victorian women, right? Back in 1845, a potato crop that a lot of the Irish population relied on were just suddenly no longer available. A group of microorganisms wiped them all out, and in result, around one million folk died or had to leave. It was draconian law and British ruling that made the exported food hard to reach people, right? Now this famine led to Irish independence and of course anti-union movements. The show Victoria actually pulled no punches back in 2017. An episode showed the true happenings behind the Great Irish Famine and behind the role that Queen Victoria herself played in coming to the aid of her then subjects. The death of at least one million. This was a very dark seven years in Irish history. Historian Christine Keenally spoke out and says, quote, there is no evidence that she had any real compassion for the Irish people in any way, end quote. Number seven, Kensington system. So as if that wasn't already stressful enough, Victoria was brought up under something called the Kensington system, which if you haven't heard before, is pretty awful. Victoria's mother, Duchess Victoria of Kent, created the system to control her daughter. She literally isolated the child from mates or family members, anybody, you name it. Her mother did this to keep her pure. Victoria only had two playmates growing up. She had her half-sister, Princess Theodora of Linnigan, and the Duchess's attendant, Sir John Conroy, his daughter, Victoire. I mean, I only had three friends growing up, so like, I get it, but this is just cruel, you know what I mean? Give her some options. She shared a room with her mother until she was the queen. She literally couldn't walk down the hallway alone. Victoria has reflected on her childhood, and it's confirmed that she hated John Conroy for manipulating her mother. So, it's very confirmed that she was not happy with any of this. She referred to him as Demon Incarnate. Number Number six, Meghan Markle solo strut. Okay, back in May 2018, we all set our alarm, okay? We woke up and we watched this royal wedding. It was lovely. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, his new duchess. This was historic. At the historic wedding, Thomas Markle was a no-show. Meghan just walked down the aisle by herself in front of, you know, a billion people watching at home or streaming it, no pressure. It was thought that at the time, this was because of Thomas's health issues. See, prior, Thomas suffered a heart attack just days before the wedding. So of course, nobody was upset. It was, you know, of course noted though. Now, now, cut to a year or so later, Thomas and the Duchess aren't as close, it seems. There's some beef unfolding. Thomas even spoke out against his own daughter. There was a scandal where Meghan spoke to Oprah, you know, Oprah. It was that whole tell-all experience. Megan actually said to her father, if you tell me the truth about working with paparazzi, then we can help. But he wasn't able to do that, and that for me has really resonated, especially now as a mother. Number five. Lead-based makeup. When I started here at the studio, I was like, okay, gotta put on some face cream maybe, drink some water, get rid of like some of these bags, I hope. Finding a skincare routine of any sorts is easy now. The lovely World Wide Web has our backs. It's a wonderful era that we live in now, but the cosmetic game back in the 18th century, <laughs> oh boy, not so fun, was it? In the 18th century, lead mixed with vinegar was used as makeup. Yeah, you would look more pale, you would have the Victorian look, gotta have those veins popping out, all serious and such, with a splash of sulfur, of course, to make those freckles pop. Queen Elizabeth I used cosmetics containing lead, mercury, and arsenic, the same poison that took out George III and Napoleon Bonaparte. Yeah, not safe at all. In fact, arsenic was on the priority list of hazardous substances. So yeah, toxic metal exposure is still an issue we're facing in this era, let alone the Victorian era. Number four, 
close cousins. The life of Queen Victoria wasn't anything like a fairy tale, obviously. So when you think about the royal family, at least when I was younger, I thought being a queen or a king meant you could just eat chocolate all day, play chess, and then attend a gala. Yeah, you just look cute and go to the ball every single day. No, it's not quite, uh, it's not quite that really at all. Queen Victoria had to do everything herself. She even had to propose to Prince Albert. Like, come on. Now it's royal tradition that nobody shall propose to a reigning monarch, so it made sense. So cut to October 1839, Victoria asked Albert for his hand in marriage. We love it. It all started when the pair was 17 years old. Victoria met the young prince, of course, at Kensington Palace during the Kensington system. And they were put together because Victoria's uncle felt like this could be beneficial down the road. Yeah, first cousins getting married sounds bizarre, but as you've seen on Game of Thrones or even this channel, it's quite common. Number three, Boy Jones and other attempts. Being the queen and all, a security team is always needed. And during her reign, there were multiple, multiple attempts to harm the young queen. The first attack was in 1840. An 18 year old man named Edward Oxford fired towards the queen's carriage. Probably took 14 seconds to prepare, right? When Edward was accused of high treason, he was actually found not guilty due to insanity. A couple years later, in 1842, it happened again. This time, two men fired at her. Again, both missed, not great aim. In 1849, her carriage was then attacked by William Hamilton. In 1850, as the carriage was passing the gates of Buckingham Palace, Robert Pate, a retired soldier, ran up and started hitting her with his cane. Victoria was okay during all this, but of course she was shook. This is some dark history. But then things got a little worse. If you haven't heard of Boy Jones or anything that happened there, I saved it for the end because it's, uh, yeah, it's quite creepy. A teenager stalked the queen back in 1838 until 1841. It was quite a long time. His name was Edward Jones. This guy somehow managed to break into Buckingham Palace more than once. The guy just knows a route in and he would break in often and would hide under the queen's sofa. Yeah, he wouldn't break anything or steal anything. He would just sit on her throne. But he would also do one of the worst things ever. He would go through her, uh, her drawers. Number two, Bloody Mary. England's first female monarch, Mary the First, ruled for just five years. The only surviving child of Henry the Eighth and Catherine of Aragon. Mary took the throne after the brief reign of her half-brother, and they say she was an evil queen, but after my homework, I'd have some chips on my shoulders too. She was married at nine and then at 11. At such a young age, everyone's yelling at you because you're too young to have kids. Like, I couldn't even imagine the pressures that were given to her, right? That's awful. She was promoted and demoted so many times. No wonder she snapped, honestly. Every time she was close to the throne, all of a sudden her family tree was just rearranged by law, right? How confusing is that? Her dad also decided to go down the other family route. She is infamously remembered for burning 300 English Protestants at the stake, which earned her the nickname Bloody Mary. So yeah, it's horrible, horrible stuff. She really snapped. Her brother found a loophole with religion, so she was like, okay then, just light them up, I guess. She's also remembered as teaming up with her half-sister Elizabeth I and ruling together, making them the first two British queens. She was spoiled from birth, but she was pretty badass, not gonna lie. And finally, number one, Queen Elizabeth's health. The world was left in disappointment when we read that Queen Elizabeth got COVID. I remember early on, Tom Hanks got it, and we're all like, eh, come on, Woody, you know, it was kind of rooting for him. But when the queen got it, it was just deflating, right? The 95-year-old monarch was celebrating her platinum jubilee, meaning this is now 70 years on the throne. 2022 is a staple for the royal family. And on top of that, the queen has also taken on these royal family scandals. They're unfolding one by one, and she's seeing them all. Queen Elizabeth also lost her companion. Her husband, Prince Philip, passed away April 9th, 2021. So she was quite lonely facing all of these scandals, the most controversial of which was Prince Andrew's settlement with his sexual assault accuser. Yeah, she has to deal with that while she's dealing with COVID. In our number 10 spot, we have Ulysses S. Grant. Apparently, Ulysses is known for being a bit of a badass in his time, but also what you may not know is that he was actually a bit of a scaredy cat. How relatable. Same Ulysses, me too. But honestly, no wonder the government kept that a secret because if the public knew that he dealt with being afraid of a lot of things, it wouldn't have reassured them that they had a strong, you know, fearless leader running their country. Apparently he had so many fears, including not being able to look at a single drop of blood. I hope he never had to go to war. Poor guy. Honestly, I feel fate when I see blood too, so I feel very understood right now. In our number nine spot, we have the government tax agenda. In a tweet that Elon made on August 11th, 2022, he pointed out perhaps yet another government secret. The US government has been talking about decreasing taxes and making that a focus for Americans. And yes, most recently on the taxpayer's dollar, the government hired 87 7,000 new IRS agents, AKA the Internal Revenue Service Agency. Is this a dark secret that Elon just brought light to? Is the government saying one thing and doing the other? Possibly. Along with the tweet, Elon said, fate, heart emoji, irony. 
In our number eight spot, we have the depopulation agenda. In an interview with the Nelk Boys on the Full Send podcast, Elon spoke about how our population is declining, even though we're being told otherwise. He said that we've been pushing the movement of the side hustle boss onto all females and males, and so they want to wait to have children. And then some just don't want to have kids at all, and as a result, the population is decreasing. He went on to explain that the way that you can measure if the population is decreasing or not is the ratio of adult depends to diapers. If there's more depends than diapers, then it's because people aren't having a lot of babies. I thought this to be very, very interesting as I sat for a moment and thought about all the people that I know that don't want kids, and also all the people that I know that are in their 30s and don't feel anywhere ready. Perhaps we will see the results of this in years to come. In our number seven spot, we have the government on Twitter. In a series of many tweets, Elon has been peeling back the layers of Twitter and seemingly trying to expose it as a government orchestrated ruse. From the moment Elon announced that he was going to buy Twitter, people suspected that you know he had an agenda, whether it was to implement better free speech policies within in the company or whether to expose that the company is actually being used by people and not just bots that have been programmed to push an agenda. In a most recent tweet, Elon posted an article about a former federal law enforcement and intelligence operations, Dan Woods, who claims that 80% of Twitter users are probably bots. Knowing this information, of course, makes it more likely that the government is using it for their agenda. Honestly though, this one doesn't surprise me if true. How many people do you know that still uses Twitter and actually tweets. I know zero. That to me says a lot. Would love to know your thoughts though in the comment section below. In our number six spot, we have Who Are You Trolling? In a tweet from August 1st, Elon shared a meme that stated, a smart man bases his political beliefs on his thoughts. A wise one changes them depending upon who they are trolling. This is a very interesting message that some think seemingly stems from the same message as George Orwell's book 1984. It's a commentary on the fact that if you feel angry towards anyone in politics, then know that this anger comes from influence in some way and you have been influenced. You will never actually know the truth, only what you're told. This is a darker government secret that people believe that Musk is trying to expose that perhaps it is wise to not feel any sort of emotion and stay neutral to the stories that you are being told. And and if you begin to lean any one way, question your anger, and in the case of this tweet, question your trolling and where it came from. In our number five spot, we have no aliens. In the Full Send podcast interview, Elon recently said, if the universe is really 13.8 billion years old, shouldn't there be aliens everywhere? If not, why not? Carl Sagan said there's either a lot of aliens or no aliens, and either one is equally terrifying. If there are no aliens, then what we have here is very rare. Some people believe that perhaps he was revealing here that human beings are unique, and perhaps the government doesn't want us to realize this, as then we would see life as way more of a precious thing. Perhaps if the world did think that humans were unique, then we would see our life as precious and you know, eat well, take care of ourselves, and try to be happy, and that certainly wouldn't be good for any business that benefits from people getting sick and hating life and the world. In our number four spot, we have Area 51. On the Full Send podcast, Elon revealed that Area 51 is not as what people believe it to be. He definitely hinted at the goings on within the secret place, but he made it seem less supernatural and dark as the internet has made it seem. But then of course, some people online think that he would say that because perhaps he's in cahoots with them and they want to get the world off their trail and so they have had him speak about it as if it's nothing special. He did reveal that the government and the people of Area 51 have invented weapons that the public haven't heard of and thought of yet. So perhaps depending on how you interpret that, these weapons could be intended for some dark use, but I mean, the very purpose of a weapon is not positive, so of course. <laughs> In our number three spot, we have government hypocrisy. Recently, you may have heard about the fact that the USA still has many people in jail that were put in there because of heed, minus the H and throw a W in front. Are you with me? Heed. <laughs> Don't want this video to get dinged. Anyways, there is a lot of people still in jail for this drug and a lot of people find it crazy that this could be the case as throughout the country it has now been legalized. But recently the US government traded a Russian war criminal with Russia to free the women's basketball player who was imprisoned there for this very substance. It feels a little hypocritical, I don't know. On Twitter, Elon said this, maybe free some people in jail for heed here too. And then posted this meme of a man not looking too pleased with 
with his hands on his hips, and the meme said, people in the US in jail for heed, while the government trades a Russian war criminal to free a women's basketball player in jail for heed. <laughs> is Elon pointing out the hypocrisy in this action and hinting at a weird dark secret agenda that the government might be hiding? Possibly. In our number two spot, we have the NPCs. Again, in the Full Send interview with the Nalk Boys, Elon speaks about how everyone in the corporate world are like NPCs. <laughs> he said, quote, are you even real? How do we know that you're not an NPC? This had the internet in a frenzy as they contemplated, is Elon pointing out the fact that people in the corporate and political world are possibly NPCs? Is this his subtle way of telling everyone? I mean, he has been trying to get viewers to see that a large part of Twitter is just bots, so there's that. Is this a stretch? Could we be living amongst NPCs? In our number one spot, we have the Epstein list. Jeffrey Epstein is a former business financier who died in prison by supposedly taking his own life in 2019 while awaiting trial on federal trafficking charges. Jeffrey was known as somewhat of a celeb amongst the Hollywood elite, and he is seen in many pictures with many celebs over many decades. Since his arrest, the public have wondered who out of his Hollywood friends were involved in this scandal, as he obviously didn't do it alone. From Bill Clinton to Prince Andrew, there have been many names that have flown on Jeffrey's private jet to his island where everything was said to have taken place. After the most recent trial with Ghislaine Maxwell, Jeffrey's accomplice who was also convicted, an apparent list of celebrities that were involved was given to the court but not released to the public. Elon took to Twitter to comment on this. He uploaded a picture of a meme that said, things I'll never see in my life, with photos of a dragon, dinosaurs, and a unicorn, and the words, the Epstein slash Maxwell client list. He then went on to say, only thing more remarkable than the DOJ, the Department of Justice, not leaking the list is that no one in the media cares cares. Doesn't that seem odd? He then added, sometimes I think my list of enemies is too short. <laughs> so, insinuating that he will most likely make more enemies after this tweet. Many people believe that he was insinuating that there are people in the government, the Department of Justice, and the media on the list, and that is what Elon is trying to get the public to see. It would certainly make sense as to why the media is not reporting about it. Starting off this countdown, we have the transmission tests. The US government once ran a series of tests on people with disabilities and prison inmates. They thought that it was fine to do so with this demographic of people because basically they thought they were going nowhere in life and they have nothing to lose. One of the tests in the mid 1940s was quite disgusting. It involved having young men swallow unfiltered stool. They did this to see how a deadly stomach bug was transmitted. The study took place at a reformatory prison, the New York State Vocational Institution. They claimed that they couldn't just spray the germs and have the test subjects breathe it in. No, no, no. They said that swallowing it was a more effective way to spread the disease. Of course, these men were forced to do so against their will and were left traumatized. In our number nine spot, we have secret affairs. It is no secret that JFK had an affair with Marilyn Monroe and Bill Clinton allegedly had his affair. But honestly, let's not be so naive as to think that they are the only ones. Apparently, Lyndon Johnson was allegedly known to be quite the ladies man within the Oval Office. And for decades, there have been rumors of presidents that were also in the closet about their sexuality. But still, most of that is, you know, hush hush, probably because of all the press and attention that would arise if such things were revealed, so makes sense. Also, the more people know about you personally, the more you become vulnerable to judgment and possible dislike, and so remaining somewhat of a mystery in order to control how the public sees you is definitely in every president's best interest. In our number eight spot, we have President John Quincy Adams. Look, if the presidents become old and incapable of working, or if they turned out to be a little mentally unstable, you're probably not going to know about it. Why? Because in the government's eyes, the less you know, the better. The presidents are just one person, and they probably aren't the only ones that make the decisions. And so from the government's perspective, if you're able to be kept out of the loop, then that's just what they're going to do. Perhaps not right, but what can we do? Which is why it is not surprising to find out that President John Quincy Adams, the US's sixth president, President, had possibly gone a little crazy while he was in office. Apparently, he believed that the world was hollow and even helped fund a program that would
but help drill a hole into the ground to try to contact the mole people and begin trading negotiations. Even in the 1800s, this was known to be a hoax, so no wonder they covered this one up. In our number seven spot, we have George Washington. As great as he was for the American people, apparently one thing that he kind of sucked at was war. Apparently he was not a good military commander, and when it came to strategy, he lost every major battle that he fought. Apparently once when he was supposed to capture a French fort, his men accidentally open fired on a British unit. Oops. <laughs> his poor commander skills would have probably hindered the public's perception on how he was an exceptional leader. So it was probably best that the public didn't know about this. It makes sense as to why the government protected this secret. He ended up being what some think to be one of the greatest presidents, so that was probably a good decision. In our number six spot, we have political clubs. Look. It's no secret that so many presidents and political figures have been tied to clubs and cults and groups and they have been accused of some pretty unfathomable things. But does that mean every president and political figure is a part of them? Of course not. Regardless, there's no proof and we can only speculate based on evidence we have and the evidence is limited. There are pictures though of some of the past presidents being a part of specific clubs such as President Ronald Reagan and Richard Nixon on Robbins Island where there was believed to be a cult-like club on that island at the time. But who knows? That's kind of purely speculation. Regardless, we know that the government will continue to protect these specific clubs and their secrets and nothing will change in that respect anytime soon. Coming up in our number five spot, we have President Roosevelt's secret. This one is purely speculation, but would be insane if it was proven to be true. The story of the attack on Pearl Harbor is known around the world because of how horrendous it was. We have all been told the story of the attack being completely unexpected and the country being blindsided. But there is some speculation as to whether that's the whole story or not. Word on the street is that allegedly President Roosevelt actually cut off trade to Japan, and people say that he allegedly told other countries to not trade with Japan, leaving Japan in a state of panic. The attack was supposedly a response to this decision, and therefore, it wouldn't be entirely unexpected if it were proven to be true. Now, America was at war, and the Japanese were technically on the opponent's side, so that decision was probably an attempt to get Japan to change positions, but in any case, crazy stuff if it were true. In our number four spot we have TV programs are. Allegedly, the initial reason why TV programs were created was with the purpose to be able to program the masses and control the narrative around the war and what was happening in the world. Experiments such as people being shown a train coming at them and the conclusion of their reaction to run away and think it to be real showed the power of imagery and how it can influence our emotions, how it can create real fear. The government knows this and the government and presidents use this to their advantage, especially the presidents that have the media on their side. Ever wonder why everyone is super uneasy during election time and filled with fear and chaos and then all of a sudden when the election is done, it all goes away? Make up whatever opinion you like on this, but it is fascinating to observe and it is almost laughable that we went about calling TV shows TV programs for so long without even realizing what we were saying, but they knew. In our number three spot, we have Thomas Jefferson's stage fright. This isn't so much terrifying as it was seemingly terrifying for Jefferson to experience, but apparently Thomas Jefferson was actually allegedly a horrible public speaker and was terrified of it. People believe that perhaps he just had a stuttering problem, but apparently that is the reason as to why throughout his presidency he only gave two speeches in total. Lordy, that is quite a secret. I truly wonder how they kept that one a secret. Well, anyways, regardless, he was known for being brilliant and is known for making great improvements to the American society, but who knows? Maybe if that was common knowledge, the public may have been hard on him for it and he might not have done as good of a job. So maybe it's best that we didn't know. In our number two spot, we have restricted areas. Okay, this is another obvious one because obviously the governments of the countries of the world are protecting all of the restricted areas in their countries, including the secret presidential hideaways which we know exist. But in any case, there are restricted areas around the world such as secret bunkers for the presidents, but also a whole town called 
called Mercury in Nevada, Area 51 in Nevada, North Base Secret Base in Canada, Menwith Hill Royal Air Force Station in the UK that's leased to the US. So many restricted areas around the world with secrets that I'm sure we can't even imagine. The potential things that lie within these secret places is hard to imagine. I bet you there is just so many things that would blow our minds and I'm not just talking about secret presidential affairs that I'm sure happen. We're talking aliens, obviously. Coming up in our number one spot, we have the Presidential Book of Secrets. Allegedly, there is a book of secrets that has been passed down from US president to US president over the years, and it was revealed in the popular movie National Treasure, one of my personal favorites, not gonna lie. This is a book that is allegedly hidden in the library at the White House, and only the librarian knows of its location, in case, you know, something happens to the president. President Obama hinted at this book being real on a talk show interview once. Some speculate that it was complete sarcasm, but on another occasion, he did say that Donald Trump would learn a series of deep secrets when he got into the office, so that's suspicious. Regardless, if it was real, he's not about to reveal that to us because it's a secret. Number 10, Project Stargate. If you've watched Stranger Things, then this one probably sounds familiar to you. In the show, Eleven started off as an experiment to psychically spy on the Russians, and turns out this was actually real. In the 1970s in California and later in Maryland, the CIA recruited numerous men and women who claimed they had ESP or extrasensory perception. People with ESP typically say that they can read minds or move objects without touching them. They were recruited to try and help uncover military and domestic intelligence secrets. Mostly, they just wanted them to spy on the Russians by reading their minds. The government covered it up, of course, because why would they want people knowing they're trying to use magic powers to win a war? But in 2017, when 12 million pages of records were declassified, all of the information about the so-called Project Stargate became public knowledge. People learning that they had been using the men and women to locate hostages and even track fugitives throughout the states. In our ninth spot, we have the malaria tests. In the late 1940s, a group of men were infected with malaria before being starved for five days. While being starved, some of them were subjected to hard labor. Those men lost 14 pounds within a few days. They then were treated for their malaria with a number of drugs. What's wild is that this study was always kept a secret. In fact, most studies from the 1940s to 60s were never covered by the media. And if they were, the focus was, oh my God, the government might find a cure. It's amazing the work that they're doing. The focus was never on how they were finding the cure and their poor test subject. In our eighth spot today, we have the pregnant women. In the late 1940s, a number of researchers were testing diethylstilvestrol, which is a synthetic estrogen on pregnant women. They thought that this would help women against pregnancy complications, but it sadly did the exact opposite. A number of women ended up miscarrying or giving birth to low birth weight babies. None of the women knew that they were being experimented on in the first place. If they had known, they probably wouldn't have risked it. In our seventh spot, we have the syphilis experiment. In the early 1950s, the government controlled a syphilis study on men in Guatemala. Their aim was to find out how syphilis and other diseases spread. Sadly, not much is known about these experiments because the government records were destroyed years after the program was shut down in 1956. What we do know though is that the men were exposed to dudes infected with this disease, but they later found that that didn't spread the infections quick enough. So they decided to inject the disease into the men. They did so by two ways. One, by making a medicine with this disease and putting it on their downstairs eggplant or by injecting it directly into their spine. What made this worse is that there were no age restrictions to these tests, so they were targeting the young too. Some declined drastically in health. Plus, a number of test subjects were left untreated so that they could study the progression of the infections as well as the damage it would cause. In our sixth spot, we have the Manhattan Project. The Manhattan Project is the project that produced the world's first atomic bomb. They conducted a number of tests, including detonating a series of bombs in a New Mexico desert. They also conducted a number of tests on humans to see the effects that radiation would have on us. One of the tests included monitoring nuclear technicians for the effects of radiation exposure. The technicians had no clue that they were being studied. 
Some fell extremely sick. One woman even suffered from kidney failure. That's when the workers began to wonder if they were getting sick from the radiation. Later, more tests were done on humans. This time, they were injected with polonium and other radioactive elements. In the end, hundreds of people ended up being injected or fed with plutonium, which is one of the most dangerous substances in the world. Sadly, they targeted individuals with disabilities. Over 57 children with disabilities and more than 100 adults with disabilities were injected with plutonium against their will. You're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the drug tests. Over the years, the government has sponsored a number of drug tests to see the effects that they have on humans. One involved a professional tennis player, Harold Blower. In 1952, he died after being injected with a fatal dose of a hallucinogenic drug. The US Department of Defense, the Department of Justice, and the New York State Attorney General all worked together to conceal evidence of its involvement in this experiment. They did so for 23 years. They all denied having any part of this. They were like, oh, they, the army was injecting him with drugs? We had nothing to do with that. We didn't know. Yeah, right. In our fourth spot, we have LSD. Dr. Frank Olson was an American bacteriologist and biological warfare scientist that worked for the army and CIA. On November 28th, 1953, Frank died after falling out of a hotel in Pennsylvania. His death is quite controversial because we don't know what truly happened, but there are a lot of theories out there. So apparently on November 19th, Olson was given LSD without his knowledge or consent. Then just days later, he plummeted to his death. Many believe that the government had something to do with this. Either they were drugging him constantly and he became so delusional that he took his own life, or he was in too deep. Apparently days before his death, he attempted to resign. He even told his wife that he made a terrible mistake and then he mysteriously died. Suspicious, don't you think? In our third spot, we have mental health experiments. Dr. Robert Heath is quite the controversial figure in history. And that's due to the number of tests that he did on patients with schizophrenia. In the studies funded by the US Army, he would dose the patients with LSD before implanting electrodes into their brain and shocking them. He thought that this would cure all their problems. He also would use this on gay men to try and make them straight. In our second spot, we have the monster experiment. In 1939, psychologist Wendell Johnson and his student Mary Tudor conducted something known as the monster experiment. For this, they used 22 young orphans. Now, the study was all about stuttering. They wanted to see if psychological abuse could induce stuttering in children. And turns out, it did. So for this test, they divided the orphans into two groups. One group, the children were praised and treated humanely. In the other group, they were treated the complete opposite. In the end, the children in the negative group developed stutters that they retained for the rest of their lives. And in our number one spot today, we have the mustard gas experiments. In the early part of World War II, it was feared that Germany was going to turn to chemical warfare. So the US Army wanted to be prepared. One way that they prepared was by studying the effects of mustard gas. So they gathered a number of healthy young men who volunteered. However, had they known what they were going to go through, chances are they wouldn't have volunteered. 1,200 volunteers were tested in small teams for several weeks. They were ordered to strip to the waist and then were sent into a chamber and doused with mustard gas. According to one survivor, and I quote, all of the men began writhing around and screaming in pain as the chemical burned through their skin. Some pounded on the walls and demanded to be let out, though the doors were locked and only opened when the time was up. Now, mustard gas causes nasty, nasty burns to the skin, and it can also cause uncontrollable bleeding in the lungs if it's inhaled. Now, the men did receive treatment after the experiments, but they were threatened. They said that if they told anyone about these experiments, then they were going to be sent to military prison. All right, let's do this. Coming in at number 10, we have more MK Ultra. Sometimes the declassification of files reveals the wildest of conspiracy theories to be true. There was a rumor way back in the 1970s that the government was trying to find a way to control people's minds. The project involved human experimentation and the United States citizens were unwittingly doped with LSD. They underwent hypnosis, sensory deprivation 
deprivation, isolation and torture. John Greenwald, founder of disclosure site The Black Vault, obtained information on MKUltra via the trusty Freedom of Information Act in 2004, but many files are still missing and many more were actually destroyed. Shockingly, CIA Director Richard Helms ordered all of the MKUltra files to be destroyed in 1973. In 2018, more than 4,000 new MKUltra documents were requested from the CIA after a successful crowdfunding campaign. It seems that the new records will be released shortly and will contain undisclosed information on the behavior modification efforts. Number 9. Vault 7 Vault 7 was definitely never meant to make it to the public eye, but unfortunately for the CIA, it got leaked. So what actually is Vault 7? Back in 2017, WikiLeaks started releasing a series of CIA documents. Vault 7 was a group of documents that contained hacking systems that were either developed or otherwise obtained by the CIA. For the most part, it should make you wary of your technology and how the government is using it. Many people know that apps will track our searches and data to learn about us and maybe even sell it to malicious companies, but it's much more than that. Weeping Angel has the ability to turn a Samsung television into a recording device, even if it appears that your television is switched off. Vault 7 also contained the ability to intercept all your iPhone messages before they got encrypted through apps like WhatsApp, Signal, and Telegram. And according to the documents, the CIA can allegedly take over your phone by exploiting vulnerabilities, but Apple has said that they patch these vulnerabilities as soon as they're aware of them. Number 8. Battalion 316 Intelligence Battalion 316 went through a few different names throughout its existence, but it was pretty much always functioning for the same reason. They were an army unit in Honduras that was responsible for carrying out political assassinations, and even kidnapping and causing pain to people who were seen as potential political competition throughout the 1980s. The group received both support and training from the CIA, even receiving their training at United States military bases. They were a military kill squad that definitely wasn't known for being friendly, committing various crimes like terrorism, misogyny, ethnic cleansing, and even so-called crimes against humanity. Their goal to remain in power in Honduras failed, leaving behind a long list of innocent victims. In 1996, members of the US Congress asked President Bill Clinton to release the documentation about the country's involvement with the human rights violations that took place in Honduras, and this is when we learned about the battalion. Number 7. MK Ultra Let's once again return to the Red Scare and the United States fight against Russians and communism. During the Cold War, they came under the belief that the communists had invented a drug that would allow them to control human minds, and the US wanted a piece of that, starting their own research into the technique under the name Project MK Ultra, trying to find their own mind control substance that could be turned into a weapon. It ran from the 50s to the 60s and led to many unknowing or even unwilling subjects being given illicit substances. The experiments were apparently covertly funded in American universities and research facilities, but it turns out that the experiments also took place in prisons and detention centers in the US, Japan, Germany, and the Philippines. The goal was to destroy the current mind and replace it with something new. Attempts included using electric shocks and illicit substances. For some, the experiments were fatal and many others had their lives completely changed. Number 6. Operation Cyclone Operation Cyclone became known as one of the longest and most expensive covert operations taken on by the CIA, costing around $630 million per year for a whole decade. So what was Operation Cyclone and why was the government pouring so much cash into it? It was an operation that worked to arm and finance militant Islamic groups during the military intervention by the USSR. The goal was to aid anti-Soviet resistances outside of the United States. They gave loans, aircrafts, weapons, and other military assistance to the groups in Afghanistan, costing the United States government billions of dollars for these so-called care packages. Eventually, the Soviets were pushed out of Afghanistan, but conspiracy was still spinning. Many of the weapons ended up being sold in local markets instead of going 
to the rebels. And some people believe that Osama bin Laden and the Al Qaeda received assistance from the US military. Number 5 Operation Ajax In the 1950s, a coup took place in Iran, and the CIA documents about it weren't released until they were pressured to a total 64 years later. As it turns out, the agency played a large role in the coup that led to the end of the current Iranian Prime Minister, a rise in nationalism, and sour US Iranian relationships remaining into the 21st century. The motivation was oil. The US and UK wanted Iran's oil, but their new Prime Minister made it inaccessible to them. So the two countries conspired to overthrow him and get the oil back. The coup seemed to fail, and the CIA sent a message to their base in Iran calling it off. But the CIA officer who received it said, nah, we're not done here. So the next day, with crowds allegedly hired by the CIA, the coup, or Operation Ajax, went through and the Prime Minister was overthrown. The monarchy and oil fields restored in the country. Anti-Western sentiment also being restored and growing to new and extreme levels. Number 4. The Five Eyes Are you familiar with one of the farthest reaching intelligence and espionage agencies in the world? You are probably a part of it and don't even know it. It is the once secret Five Eyes Intelligence Alliance. After World War II, the US and UK came together to create an information sharing alliance as a result of how important communication was for them during the war effort. And in 1956, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand were added to this group. The classification status on these documents was USA, UK, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, eyes only. And that was obviously a bit wordy, so they shortened it down to five eyes. It has been operating for 70 years now and is used for surveillance and sharing classified information between the five countries. The alliance was especially important during the Cold War when the countries shared a lot of information like the location of Soviet weapons in North America. The alliance was kept a secret until documents of the original UK and USA agreement were released back in 2010. Number 3. Operation PB Success Similarly to Operation Ajax, Operation PB Success was a covert CIA military operation that took place in another country, this time Guatemala. This was another coup that took place only a year after the one in Iran in 1954. At the time, Guatemala had a very new democracy, only being on their second democratically elected president. But the United States saw him as a threat, this being due to his allowance of the Guatemalan Communist Party to act freely and land reform movements that threatened US industries. The CIA then worked through various different plans of action to overthrow the Guatemalan government, including assassination and faking tensions between the country and Honduras. They spread false information, placed anonymous phone calls, and hired anti-communist students to create a fake opposition. Eventually, the president stepped down and their democracy was seen as unfavorable. The United States training that the Guatemalan military now had led to a war lasting decades, tearing apart the country. But PB success was a success as it worked, and they were able to deny CIA involvement, until the documents were released in 1997. Number 2. The Secret War We're once again fighting communism, this time in Vietnam. But while the Vietnam War was taking place, a smaller secret war was taking place in Laos, attempting to stop communism from spreading to Southeast Asia. The Americans essentially used the countries of Laos and Cambodia to fight their own war against Northern Vietnam and communism, using their tribes as their soldiers. While it was clear that the small armies had no hopes of truly winning against Northern Vietnam, the United States and the CIA continued on with their fight, devastating the country and peoples of Laos and Cambodia. They came out of the war with their land and lives completely lost and changed, but the CIA wrote it down in their history books as a success, disregarding the country's sacrifice. The CIA's historical retrospective on the situation not being released until many years later. Number 1. Operation Condor it's the Cold War again, and the United States government are fighting against terrorism, this time under the code name Operation Condor. It was a campaign of political repression and so called state terror that was backed by the US and CIA. It involved many heinous activities like kidnapping, killings, political espionage, and much more, all taking place throughout South America. The CIA chose to describe it as a cooperative effort by the intelligence slash security services of several South. American countries to combat terrorism and subversion, but really it was a lot more than that. 
Condor's key members were Argentina, Chile, Uruguay, Paraguay, Bolivia, and later Brazil. The United States provided them with planning, coordination, technical support, and military training all routed through the CIA. It led to many military dictatorships and numerous deaths throughout South America. And there is so much detail and information on this one that if you want it, you're just gonna have to look it up for yourself. Number 10. No crown, no problem. Okay, directly after his father died in 1936, King Edward VIII took the throne. But the tides quickly turned when less than a year later, he renounced his position. Now, this was huge. This was a massive scandal right off the bat. This is not something that's taken lightly in the royal family. Turns out the woman responsible for stealing his heart was that of Wallace Simpson, American socialite who'd already been divorced once before. And at this point, she was working through her second divorce. So you can only imagine how folk reacted to that, right? His proposal the proposal to Simpson, of course, caused social and political backlash. The Church of England wasn't so chill with Edward marrying somebody who had already been divorced, so Edward was forced to abdicate. He had to, okay? Edward and Simpson then tied the knot in 1937, and they stayed together until Edward's death much later in 1972. So, dare I say, it was worth the trouble. Coming in at number 9, we have PPD29. Catchy. In 2015, Obama released his new hostage policy, which was called President Policy Directive Number 30. Now, the last publicly announced derivative was PPD 28, which led people to realize that. 29 must have been passed under the radar. PPD 29 is clearly a secret national security order. This literally is a secret, so I have no idea what to tell you other than it exists, and in six years' time, its declassification will be up for discussion. We may find out sooner if the law ever needs to be executed publicly, although, as it's in the national security interest, we probably don't want to find out until it's declassified. Coming into number eight, we have swine flu. Okay, hands up if you actually contracted swine flu. Me, but I wasn't living in the United States, so maybe this doesn't apply. But still, it sucked, although I've never been as skinny as after I recovered. Swings and roundabouts. So it's been 10 years since the outbreak of swine flu, which caused a global pandemic. But actually, it turned out to not be as bad as everyone thought it would be. Thank goodness. Nonetheless, 10 years means that documents regarding the government's knowledge on the epidemic are soon to be declassified. It seems from a Forbes article that something shady may have been going on with the government and swine flu. The article suggests that not only were sick pigs not being monitored, but also that the government funded Center for Disease Control were very protective of their data. They were not fulfilling the public health mission by sharing their findings. Coming into number seven, we have quote unquote sicko jokes. In September 2018, it was revealed that the Cold War era jokes had been discovered among millions of declassified documents regarding Soviet Russia. The CIA's deputy director in the 1980s received a document entitled Sicko Jokes. It was a file of jokes told amongst Soviets themselves about their own leaders. One corker from the era was, a worker stands in line at a liquor store. They say, I've had enough. Save my place. I'm going to shoot Gorbachev. Two hours later, he returns to reclaim his place in line. His friend asks, did you get him? To which they reply, no. The line there was even longer than the line here. Troll a lol a lol, some classic 1989 slash 90 humor. Sure, Gorbachev of course was the last leader of the Soviet Union and at the helm amid its collapse. My point being that if the CIA had a list of jokes about the Soviet Union, they absolutely have documents containing loads of jokes for all political leaders and honestly, I kind of want to hear them. Building on from that, Soviet secrets are coming into number six. In the name of access to information, which is something democracies are supposed to champion, the CIA is obliged to declassify documents. Sure, one way they get around this is by releasing a whole load at the same time and hoping that the juicy information, the shady information, goes unnoticed in the sea of data. This may or may not have been their thought process when they released millions, actually millions, of Soviet era files in 2017. It's already been revealed that the CIA recruited mind readers to spy on Soviets, with the job title Remote Viewers in something called Project Stargate. What do the other 12 million files? I always have to reveal? I'll have to wait and see, but like, I don't know, Project Stargate sounded pretty exciting. Okay, I swear, 
This is the last I will mention Russia in this list, but now seems like a good time to mention Donald Trump's Russia release at number 5. In late 2018, Donald Trump ordered the release of classified documents regarding the Russian interference with the 2016 election. The White House announced that the press had asked the Justice Department and the Director of the National Intelligence to publish secret material. On September the 6th, 2018, he tweeted, maybe declassification to find additional corruption. He was seeming to suggest that there was some kind of deep state working to undermine him. The statement came a year after it was revealed in declassified documents that Russia did actually interfere with the election. By the end of September 2018, Trump had backed down somewhat on the document release and asked a justice watchdog to review the Russian docs. Hmm. Coming into number 4, we have weapons of mass destruction. It has been 18 years since the war on terror began and 16 years since the onset of the Iraq war, when the United States decided to invade the Middle Eastern country. Some documents have already been declassified, the rest may come at the 25 year mark in 2026 and 2028, so not long now. In 2015, the CIA seemingly declassified the documents justifying the war, two years after President Obama declared the war over. The document was from 13 years prior and was supposed to be a justification for the war, but in actuality it revealed that the US were lacking, and I quote, specific information on many key aspects of Iraqi President Saddam Hussein's weapons of mass destruction. Basically, the declassified documents show that it was all a little bit of a ruse. The declassified document led to Congress concluding that the Bush administration had overstated the Iraqi threat. I wonder what else we will learn about about these so called weapons of mass destruction from the documents when they're declassified. Coming into number 3, we have the JFK assassination. John F. Kennedy Jr. was assassinated over 50 years ago, and there are still a lot of questions surrounding his murder. The official line is that the perpetrator was Lee Harvey Oswald, but there are a number of conspiracies that suggest that this isn't the full story. There has been a slow release of classified files on the November 1963 assassination of JFK, but of course, Thousands remain a secret. Donald Trump released further Kennedy files to the public, but the full story is, of course, yet to come. Not all of the documents were released, some were very much held back, so the full story on one of the most high profile deaths of all time is yet to be told. Coming into number 2, we have Guantanamo. Guantanamo Bay was set up by the George Bush administration in 2002. It is a United States prison camp filled mainly with suspected terrorists. Rumours of detainee torture and imprisonment without trial were very much just rumours, until the CIA were forced to declassify a number of reports on the controversial prison. I'll read an excerpt from a Guantanamo Bay document I found in the FBI declassified vault. On a couple of occasions, I entered an interview room to find a detainee chained hand and foot in the fetal position to the floor with no chair, food or water. Most times they had urinated or defecated themselves and had been left there for 18 to 24 hours or more. On one occasion the air conditioning had been purposefully turned up so far that the temperature was so cold. The detainee was barefoot and shaking from the cold. On another occasion the AC had been turned off completely, making the temperature in the unventilated room well over 100 degrees. The detainee was almost unconscious on the floor with a pile of hair next to him. He'd literally been pulling it out throughout the night. The report also mentions the sound torture that had been rumoured. The information was supposed to be declassified in 2031, but during the Obama administration there was a data dump of declassified Guantanamo documents. Again though, there are still thousands of files waiting to be released which will further reveal the extent of government torture and more. Finally coming into number 1, we have 9-11. It has been 18 years since 9-11, so does that mean in 6 years time we're going to find out exactly what happened? Uh. Will we read classified government documents that detail exactly how the planes hit and what it took to melt steel beams? Will we find out more about the alleged pipeline through Afghanistan? Was there advanced knowledge of an attack? Did the government ignore warnings? My guess is we're going to need to wait longer than the usual 25 years for these answers, as likely the classified documents are still pretty sensitive. Some answers are coming though, many documents have already been declassified. The Obama administration famously 
declassified the final 28 pages of the December 2002 report. This was conducted by the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence and the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence. Honestly, like, I think in my lifetime we will have more answers. I really, 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 really hope so.